Hello, Reese. How are you this afternoon? I'm very Morning. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm so excited to speak with you about this role because you do quite an incredible job at playing, and I mean this in the nicest way, a very creepy character. What attracted you to this role? <laughs> well, I think it was the opportunity to play someone who's very sure of them, of the the story they've told themselves as to how they've ended up in this woods. And I think the film was an exploration of um, the human animal and how we all have to create narratives to sort of justify our existence. And Zach, my character, has been living off grid in the woods as this sort of hermit-like character to flee this supposed pandemic. And it was just, I know it was he was going to be a quite a scary character, but I thought a creepier way to portray him would be to play him very calm and very sure and very certain. And I thought that would be much more frightening to be confronted with that, with a person that's unwavering in their madness. And I thought that would be more frightening, I think, than really being outlandish and uh, axe-wielding maniac. I am also <laughs> that, but also I like playing the sort of the stiller version of, of Zach as well. Yeah, you found a great balance in between. I mean, I think all the characters have a duality to them. Did you find that to be challenging to kind of go from acts, you know, wielding madman to the more, you know, assured uh, character? Yeah, it was um, it was a challenge, but and, and, and just calibrating going back to the stillness and the calmness and then knowing when it would be best suited and most effective to blow through the roof and become completely mad. It was all there in the script, really, but it was it was interesting because Ben would come in and say, um, st take it down a bit, you know, so I would be <laughs> overacting and then he would say, make it even stiller, all in the eyes. So it would be, there'd be calibrations of as far as um, playing his um, his mania up and up front or trying to keep it as a as a subtext. Now, you have been in some great horror films and some cult films as well. Yeah. Do you have any early memories with the horror genre or with films like that? What got you into this to be the great actor you are now? Well, that's very kind. But uh, yeah, I, I've since childhood been um, sort of a horror film fan. I was the, the kid that would, I'm like the, the boy in um, Salem's Lot who had all the, uh, the dolls in his room. Like you, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, me. So yeah, yes, thank you. you. Yeah. But yes, exactly. I was um, Danny Glick's friend, and I would be in the room reading Edgar Allan Poe when all the other kids were out playing in the sunshine. You know, I would be the creepy kid reading um, the horror magazines and, and EC comics. And so I'm a very much like a Stephen King childlike character that was obsessed with horror from an early age and probably saw too many hammer horrors too early and yet it influenced me in so many ways because I sort of thrilled at the storytelling aspect and how it made you feel something you know I really enjoyed the fact that you go to a to a horror film like a comedy it gives you the relief of a of a jump scare is the same as a laugh and often you'll hear an audience laugh in relief after a big scary moment in a film and I've enjoyed exploring that in my career finding those moments of uh, of levity in in the, the the scariest times and that's a lovely thing to explore I think as an actor and a writer you know it's fantastic to get that balance oh I love that answer I also I hear EC comics and hammer horror a lot when I ask that question so yeah. I always love hearing hammer come up because that was a big influence for me growing up yeah. seeing it rerun on television now you get this script a pretty strange script during one of the weirdest times in our life yeah. how how did it feel were you like nervous jumping onto this project during this time period or did you feel it was a perfect time capsule well it was sort of a, a bit of both in the reaction to Ben telling me that he's written his script and it was a horror film and there was a part for me and we're going to do it in the in the summer and I was like really I don't I didn't believe it I thought you've written this out for therapy for yourself to write yeah. do something in the lockdown but we won't make it we can't make it and yet as the months rolled on it, it, it was happening and then we were COVID tested and we went the dates were set and suddenly I was having a wig fitting and I would and my beard I grew my beard in just in case and the next thing we're in in these woods filming this thing. And it felt like a ray of hope. It was such a cathartic experience to think it's possible 
to do it you know it did feel yeah. that there were times last year when it was like will we ever go back to normal is there any normality what's normal a new normal so to film and achieve it was a real thrill and it felt such a triumphant thing to have gone out with this band of 25 people and Ben at the helm and got it over the line you know I also like knowing that you wore a wig because I thought you were completely unrecognizable. I had to Google you multiple times because I was like, yeah. I know this name. Why don't I know this character? <laughs> yeah. Now, now I heard Ben had a very immersive set with the sounds playing and things like that. Was that helping you get into the mood? What was the on-set life like? It was good, yeah. And he did that before with uh, when I did Field in England. He, um, he manages to bring into the present, into the time, of the filming, which is a strange time because the, a film is and a TV, it's sort of made three times, as I'm sure you've heard this mm -hmm. thing before, where it's written and then it's you you go out into the field and you create, you, you capture the bits by filming and then it's reconstructed again in the edit. And Ben managed to sort of bring some of what it would have actually, what it's going to turn out like into the presence of the filming because he would play ambient music on huge speakers in the middle of the wood in the woods and the lighting helped and so it gave you a, a, a different frisson to imagining it it just gave you it soundtracked it gave you a score yeah so that you were able to and, and it elevated your performances because it just gives you that it gives you a feeling in your bones that you wouldn't necessarily have if you were just imagining what it was going to be like at the other end because everything is elevated with dramatic music or whatever it might be so he, he managed to and that it really helps it's sort of like a, a simple thing but it was a really effective thing to do well thank you so much reese for speaking with me these were some thank great you. answers and you oh, let you. me know something about a great great film so thank you again